This episode of Musket Matters is brought to you by the Vortex Ball Roller, the fastest way to prepare your round ball ammunition. Find out more at www.forth-armory.com. Howdy folks, and welcome to another edition of Musket Matters. This is kind of a long overdue sequel uh, to a video that I made about six years ago concerning the Enfield cartridge. So about six years ago, a company called No Bullet Molds, N-O-E, did a production run of bullet molds for what is today often referred to as a Pritchett style of bullet. And they did a, a .566 diameter bullet that's appropriate for the earlier styles of the Enfield cartridge. And they did a .550 diameter bullet, which is appropriate for later iterations of the uh, Enfield cartridge. <clears throat> they also produced plug plates that let you produce the expansion plugs that go in the hollow cavity of these, of these bullets. Uh, so I bought these <clears throat> when they became available about six years ago. And right away I set about trying to figure out how to make Enfield cartridges. Now the 1855 design, which my other video already covers how to make, um, it was it was pretty simple. It was a, a much simpler variant of cartridge than what this uh, design ultimately ended up as. And when I tried to figure out how to make the 1860, the final variant, I was having difficulty figuring out how the pieces went together. The instructions that I had found online, there were some very good documents. There was a guy named Bruce Karens who had a very nice um, PDF that has lots of good uh, research information in it. But the illustrations that he provided, the artwork on how the cartridges go together were wrong. Uh, and, you know, as things do, other things came up uh, and, and I, I kind of lost interest. But not too long ago, a, a, new, a new book has come out by Mr. Brett Gibbons uh, called The English Cartridge. And, and this is a fantastic work. Anyone who's interested in muzzle loading, in the Civil War, in the Enfield rifle musket, this, this is really a must-have book. Uh, this book basically covers the evolution of the 1853 uh, Enfield ammunition from its uh, prototype in the P-51 rifled musket uh, and then to the adoption of the P-53 and the, the pitfalls with the, uh, you know, they tried making larger diameter bullets so they more precision fit to the bore to backtracking away from that and finding that it was you know, you could have a smaller bullet and still it would load just as easy. Uh, this book is just fantastic. It, it documents um, the, the, the motives that were behind the decisions, the people that were involved in the decisions. Um, you know, there's lots of names you've heard of, like Minier and Pritchett. And it turns out that those people had very minor contributions to the evolution of ammunition as we know it, yet their names are the ones that stuck. But there's names like Delvine, uh, Thoven, um, um, boxer, uh, hay. Uh, there's lots of people that left a, a much heavier mark on the evolution of this ammunition, and and this book gives you that information. It's it's really great. In addition, uh, this book covers um, you know it's got an appendix that covers modern paper substitutes that you might want to use for making these kind of bullets uh, and templates and you know dimension sizes and everything you need to know about the Enfield ammunition is in this book. Great book, highly recommend it. Even if you're not interested in making ammunition, just from a historical perspective, the education that you get about, about the ammunition and the evolution of it is, is really interesting. And, and it's really amazing that, you know, this ammunition really kind of was developed. It was the pinnacle of muzzleloading ammunition. For about a period of 10 years, it went from, you know, revolutionary to state of the art to obsolete. Uh, so a really great read. So won't, won't uh, bore you with any more about that. <clears throat> now we'll talk about the actual making of the Enfield cartridge. So um, the, the paper that I use for the business end of the cartridge, the, uh, what I call the business end, is the end of the cartridge that holds the bullet. Uh, this paper, uh, I use 100% cotton rag, and that is what they would have used in period. Um, they didn't really use uh, wood pulp based paper back then. You can still get 100% cotton rag paper today. And uh, this is what I was using for making the business end of the cartridge, the part that uh, contains the bullet. And uh, I think this is about 16 pound, I'm not sure. 
Um, the, the later version of the Enfield cartridge is a little more forgiving on paper because they reduced the diameter of the bullet from, from 0.568 down to 0.550. So it's not, it's not nearly as tight a fit in the bore. Uh, so you, know, you, can, you can really make these cartridges just out of notebook paper if, if you wanted to do so. So I've got a set of templates here, steel templates that are precision made that allow you to cut out these uh, pieces of paper very easily. You just lay it over it and use a razor knife and, and, and cut out your, your pieces. Um, Fourth Armory uh, is where you can obtain these and I'll put a link down below to where you can purchase your own steel templates if you like. All right, I'm gonna demonstrate here how to use these templates from Fourth Armory to create the various uh, pieces of paper that you'll need for the 1860 Enfield cartridge. So I've got some stiffer construction or uh, cardstock paper here for the stiffener or the cylinder of the powder tube. And uh, we'll use the right template here for that. You just need a, you'll wanna use a nice sharp razor knife One piece and then we've got our 100% cotton rag paper that I just got off of Amazon and we'll take the powder chamber outer wrapper template and of course you can cut through multiple layers of paper at one time you don't have to do these one at a time like I'm doing for the demonstration. That's the, these are the two pieces that are required for the powder chamber. And then lastly, and you'll notice how I'm using the edge of the paper to save on cuts, save time. So the template uh, has nice slits in it already made for cutting the slits that help the paper separate from the bullet in flight. And there's the piece of paper that's used for wrapping the bullet end of the cartridge. So that's it. That's how to use these templates from 4th Armory for making your cartridge pieces. So I use these templates to make um, my pieces of paper for the cartridge. And to get started, we'll, we'll start with the, the business end of the, of the cartridge. So um, what you'll do is you'll need a mandrel that matches the size of your bullet. These bullets are 0.550 in diameter. And here's a, a 3D printed mandrel that's 0.550 in diameter. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can just use a half inch dowel rod and you can build up the diameter, um, the extra 50 thousandths of an inch using masking tape or packaging tape or whatever you like. So we wanna roll up this cartridge. Oh, and the mandrel. Yeah, nope, sorry. Got, got ahead of myself here. All right, so the mandrel, you want it to be flush with these ends of these, these slits that are in the paper. So it's about, I don't know, a half an inch away from the uh, edge of the paper, maybe a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the paper. And you can see the wide end of this trapezoid is, is down at this end of the mandrel. You want to roll this nice and tight because this is going to be uh, what paper patches your bullet. It, it's what's wrapped around the bullet, so you want a good tight fit. So once you've wrapped this up like so, the next thing we have to do is choke the end of the uh, cartridge. So I've just made a little table here with a dowel rod glued in place with a string and a, and a dowel rod and all you do to do choking is you wrap around the end of the cartridge just flush with the end of the mandrel. 
you put your finger over the end of the paper and you just pull the choking cord. And that will constrict the paper and make kind of a little flower looking thing on the end of your cartridge. So the next step is to tie that off. Uh, in period, they would have used uh, a three ply linen thread like this. I got it from a, a book binding store, which I don't remember the name of anymore. Um, and then you tie that off with two half hitches. Trim the string. And you want to trim your little flowerette as well until you're left with kind of a little, a little bun, so to speak. And that's the, the bottom end of the cartridge. And this tube now is what is going to become your paper patched bullet. It's a totally independent and separate compartment uh, of the cartridge than the powder end of the cartridge. And we'll see that uh, when we get to the powder end. Original iterations of this, the powder cylinder went inside the uh, main outer wrapper. This wrapper was as long as the entire cartridge. And what would happen with the earlier iterations of the cartridge is sometimes the powder would leak out from the inner uh, powder chamber and then work its way down this outer wrapper and get you know, between the paper and the bullet, which would grow the diameter of the bullet, make it hard to load, and then contribute to fouling of, of the uh, cartridge, ruining it. So uh, in this final evolution of the cartridge design, these were separated as two separate uh, compartments, and then there's no way that powder can get down into this compartment. So this is the, the bullet end. This is the one that I use the 100% cotton rag paper. So then we take our bullet and we put a plug in it. My plugs, I use a, a plug plate, uh, the same, uh, mo no bullet molds made the plug plate to go with the bullet. And uh, you can use Milliput in here. Uh, you can use um, Bondo, which is what I used. Uh, it's basically a two part uh, resin. And uh, I'll uh, do a little piece uh, in a minute here to show how we make the, the plugs themselves. All right, we're gonna show here how to use the No Bullet Molds, that's N-O-E, uh, plug plate that they produced with their uh, quote unquote Pritchett mold uh, to create the plugs that go inside the hollow cavity, uh, just like the boxwood and later clay fired uh, plugs that, that were used uh, in period for the infield cartridge. So uh, I use Bondo to create mine. Bondo is a uh, body repair resin, it's a two part epoxy essentially that uh, is used for doing auto repairs. You can also use Milliput. Um, there are other uh, hardening type of things that you can use with this mold. Uh, I found uh, Bondo to be quick, um, relatively inexpensive. You know, a can of this is probably you know, 15 bucks or so. Um, so uh, to get started, you're gonna need some wax paper. You're gonna need a couple blocks of wood and you're gonna need uh, you know, something disposable to, to mix the Bondo in, and you're gonna need a couple um, squeegees of some kind like this. These, they sell these wherever they sell the Bondo. So, um, also when you're doing this, the, the Bondo sets up relatively quickly. You only have you know, a few minutes to get this stuff scooped into the um, cavity, so you're gonna to wanna to work quickly. Um, and so uh, basically the process we're gonna do here is we're gonna mix up the Bondo, we're gonna smear it into these cavities, and then we're gonna get as much of it, you wanna get these decks as clean as you can, because otherwise you've got to use a razor knife and scrape away the excess. So you want as little extra material you know, extruded out beyond the surfaces as, as you can. Uh, and then uh, once it's full of Bondo, we're gonna, wrap it in, in wax paper and you can either then you know this is already a nice hard flat surface you know you can put some blocks of wood and something heavy on top of it or better yet you can take this when it's full of bondo and put it between two pieces of wood and squeeze it in a machinist vise which is what i'm going to do and you won't see that part of it All 
All right, so let's get started mixing up some Bondo. So the first part we're gonna get is the resin itself. You're definitely gonna wanna use disposable equipment for this. And you're gonna want a good sized dollop of the, of the material. That's probably a little, little bit too much that I have there on the plate, but it is what it is. Then you're going to want some hardener. Now I'll just put it on top. And it doesn't make, take much hardener. And then you can start mixing this together. And once you start mixing, you know, it's time to start working quick because this is a chemical reaction and this material is starting to cook off. As, as you mix it, it's starting to become, uh, it'll, it'll get warm actually, and it'll start to become, you know, the compound resin that, that hardens up. And what you're looking for is a nice, even grayish pink color. You don't want to see any streak streaks of hardener in it like I just turned up there. Okay. We're going to use our squeegee tool to squeegee the material down into these cavities. Okay, that's looking really good. So I really, I really made up too much material here, which is a shame because this will be wasted. All right, so you can see that I have gone down, got a towel, get this stuff off my fingers. I have really used the squeegee to squeegee as close to the deck as possible so that I've got very little cleanup to do to these parts. Uh, I'll take a razor knife and scrape them, but sometimes if you get this a thin enough coat, um, you'll pop them out from the bottom and they'll just pop right out. All right, I can't talk a whole lot here because that resin is hardening up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these going and off to the machinery vise. All right, so we're back from the uh, machinery vise where I had this chucked up between two pieces of wood. The Bondo only takes about 15 or 20 minutes, if that long, to set up. And if you're wondering if it's set up or not, all you have to do is come back to your mixing tray and tap it and you can see it's, it's set up. It's still a little tacky, which is good. You don't really want to wait until this stuff has become fully cured because it might be hard to carve away the bits uh, to get the plug pieces out. So it's been about 15 or 20 minutes and you can feel this stuff gets warm um, when it's cooking off. So you don't want to probably have it on your skin or anything while it's cooking off. So here's our, our plate. And if you've done a good enough job squeegeeing these off, you can generally just pop them out and they will pop free without having to do any cleanup at all. And it looks like I've done a good job. Might be helpful to have a, a little tool of some kind. Let's see what I've got here on the shelf. Yeah, that makes life a lot easier. Here we go. 
50 plugs. And you probably want to let these sit, you know, for a day. You know, I'm sure you're not going to use them today. In fact, you could probably go ahead and make them up into cartridges now, and they would fully cure by the time you were ready to shoot them. Um, and then uh, to clean up this plug plate, uh, all you need is a razor knife, which I have set somewhere, which of course I can't find at the moment. But uh, you know, this this excess resin uh, will chip right off, and uh, you can just scrape it off with a razor knife. So that's how you use the plug plate with uh, Bondo. Uh, like I said, you can use Milliput. Um, you could probably use some kind of um, heat-fired clay and bake them in the oven, perhaps, uh, and end up with clay-fired plugs like they did for the final evolution of this cartridge. But uh, that's it in a nutshell. So, with the uh, once you've made your your, your plugs. You get your plug into your bullet, and then you just put the bullet down inside the business end of the cartridge. So that concludes the bullet end of the cartridge. So now we have to make the powder cylinder part of the cartridge. So to make this, you're gonna want a little bit of a thicker paper for the cylinder itself. So this is you know a kind of cardstock, kind of construction paper, might actually be a little bit too thick, but um, anyway, it uh, it does it. The, it comes out to 0 0.550 in diameter when I'm finished rolling it up, which is what you want because the powder cylinder, as we'll see, will fit down inside this tube. And this tube was made on a 0 0.550 mandrel for a 0 0.550 bullet, so our finished tube needs to be the powder tube needs to be 0.55. So you'll need a another mandrel. Um, slightly smaller in diameter. I, th I think this is 0.48 inches in diameter, but I, I don't remember. Uh, and in one end of it, there's a bullet-shaped cavity. So it's shaped like the nose of a bullet. And we'll see why that is here in just a minute. So you want to take your mandrel. You want to take your stiffener paper. You want the hollowed out end of your mandrel to be flush with this long end of the trapezoid and then we're just gonna roll it up. But here's the key, here's a trick. You don't roll it up all the way. You wanna leave this little triangle sticking out. And then you're gonna take the outer wrapper of the powder chamber and you're gonna lay it on top of there. And you're gonna leave about a half inch sticking out beyond the end of the mandrel. And what this does by, by overlapping these, when you roll them together, they're actually locked together. And so when you withdraw this mandrel, if, if they weren't locked together, often as not when you pull out the mandrel, the entire stiffener tube would come out of the cartridge. But by doing this overlap mechanism, it locks them together so that when you pull out the mandrel, the powder stiffener tube stays put. So now we just roll it up together. And you'll see as you go, you know, it starts, it'll pick up the outer wrapper because they're tied together and it'll, it'll wrap them together real nicely. All right, so now you can see here, we've got paper beyond the end of our mandrel. And that mandrel is hollow on the inside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of pinch the end of the paper together here and twist it. And I twist it in the direction of the, of the wrapping so that it wants to keep it bound tight. In other words, you're tightening it around the mandrel instead of loosening it if I went the other way. And once you get it kind of tucked in there, here's another tool that's on the, the original boxer drawing for how to make the cartridge. And this tool has a, a bullet nose uh, carved into it. Of course, this is 3D printed, but you know, theirs would have been made out of a piece of wood probably. And uh, you know, it's interesting how well this works with a little palm swell it fits in your hand so you really can get some leverage on it. And you put that in the, the hollow cavity here. You wallow it around a little bit. And now you have created a pocket uh, not only has it firmly crimped the end of the powder tube so it won't unravel, but it's made a little pocket 
that the nose of the bullet will sit in. So when, you know, we have our, our, our bullet part of the cartridge here with the tube down in there, when this tube goes in there, it's gonna seat nice and relatively seamlessly and strongly against the bullet. So this is the, the powder chamber of the cartridge. And this is, if you will, the bullet chamber of the cartridge. And the next step is to marry the two together. So just like that, they're now integrated into one. So the final piece that you need to complete the assembly of these cartridges is what they called a gummed band. And for a modern expediency, our gummed band is half inch wide masking tape. Theirs was half inch wide also. And then at the junction between these two chambers, we'll just use the, our, our gummed band, i.e. masking tape, to bond the two halves together. And that's the finished cartridge. So now we can remove the mandrel. So this cartridge is now ready for lubricating and it's ready for charging with powder. To lubricate, uh, which we'll demonstrate here in a minute, uh, we'll just take this cartridge and some molten lube and you'll dip the cartridge into your lubricant until you reach the shoulder of the bullet. Well, where's the shoulder of the bullet? I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but we can see there's, there's three slits that have been cut into the paper. And these slits are designed so that when this bullet is fired and it exits the muzzle, these slits will help shred the paper. It wants to come apart and leave the bullet behind so that it doesn't cling to the bullet and alter its trajectory downrange. So when you're dipping, uh, you can see where those slits end. Well, that's how far you'll need to dip the lubricant in. So. You'll dip these into the lubricant, which we'll demonstrate here in just a minute. All right, lubricating the bullets is pretty easy. All you need is a hot plate of some kind. Uh, I use an electric hot plate here. I would recommend electric over any kind of flame, especially if you're planning on charging your cartridges and then lubricating. If you're gonna be lubricating charged cartridges, you definitely don't want any flame involved. Um, with an electric hot plate, you can probably charge them and then uh, lubricate after the fact. I like to lubricate and then take my lubricated cartridges somewhere else for the charging step. So there's no heat involved uh, when I charge my cartridges. So I've got my completed cartridge here that's not charged and I've laid a bullet alongside of it so that you can get an idea of which part of the cartridge here needs to have lubricant on it. So Basically, we're going to dip them in as far as is required to get the shoulder or, the, or rather the bearing surface of the bullet uh, coated in lubricant because this is the part of the cartridge that's going to end up going down the barrel. So that's the only part that we need to dip into the lubricant. So you'll need uh, a little container full of your molten lube. In this case, um, I'm just using 50-50 uh, beeswax and um, uh, vegetable shortening, but uh, you know the period lube varied from different uh, formulations of beeswax and tallow um, to uh, ultimately 100% beeswax with maybe just a little bit of mineral mineral spirits in it. So um, your lube, your choice, uh, you'll use whatever you want to use there. So to lubricate the cartridge, we simply take the completed cartridge and we're going to dip it into the lubricant and we're going to pull it back out, let it drip off a little bit, and that's it. That is your lubricated cartridge, and now we're ready to go and charge it and crimp the tail, and uh, you've got a finished cartridge. Now, once we have finished lubricating the bullet, um, the next step is to charge it with powder. The uh, military load for these was 
two and a half drams or about 68 grains of um, musket powder. And that's probably about equivalent to 2F powder uh, today. Um, so 68 grains, um, I believe they used a little bit less for um, carbines, but uh, the cartridge itself was the same. Uh, you are, of course, are free to, uh, you know, alter your charge to whatever gives you best groupings, but the service load was 68 grains, and uh, it turns out the powder stiffener tube in there, when you pour in 68 grains of powder, it fills up that tube, just as you would expect. Once you've charged your tube to finish the cartridge, we simply pinch together right above where the stiffener of the powder tube is, the excess paper of the outer wrapper of the powder chamber, and then you kind of twist it and push it into the end of the stiffener. And when you're done, this is what it looks like. And you got a little convenient tail on the end of your cartridge. And so to use this cartridge, um, we will just tear off that tail. You can either use your, your teeth to tear it off, you can use your hand to tear it off. And when you've done that, that stiffener leaves behind a nice little mouth. And, and then you'll pour the powder down the barrel. And then you invert the cartridge, put it in the barrel, and snap off the powder tube. And once you've done that, it leaves behind a paper patched bullet in the muzzle of your bore. And so the next step is to take the ramrod and drive this home. And it's really amazing if you've never shot a lubricated paper patched bullet like this before, and you've only shot uh, traditional, you know, quote unquote, mini balls or expanding balls where there's, um, you know, lube grooves that have lube on it. When you drive a lubricated uh, patched bullet down the bore, it's like, it feels like you're running a bore mop down the bore. And so you can feel it, you know, literally coating the barrel with the uh, lubricant as it goes down the bore. So every shot, you're basically swabbing your bore with lubricant. And uh, after you fire off, you know, a dozen or so of these shots, and you clean your, your, uh, your uh, bore with a cleaning patch, it's astonishing how much cleaner the bore is uh, after shooting this kind of bullet as opposed to a traditional US expanding ball bullet. So it really does make a difference in ease of loading and uh, control of the fouling. Um, it's easy to see when you try these experimentally why this was the ultimate evolution of muzzleloading ammunition. So um, when this bullet flies down range, of course, you know, as I talked about earlier, the slits in the paper um, and even, you know, earlier iterations of the design didn't have the slits. You know, this stuff gets, hits the wind as it's going and this paper will shred. And you'll find these, you know, within, you know, a, a few feet of the end of your muzzle, you'll find these on the ground. And then the bullet, of course, continues downrange um, without little bits of paper attached to it. So that's uh, the story on how to create the 1860 style of cartridge. Uh, I hope you've liked this video. If you have, uh, please subscribe. If you have any questions, leave comments. I'll, I'll try to get to those and uh, answer any questions you have. And I'll provide links to, um, you know, where you can obtain these, these templates if you want to see, to get some of those uh, tools. And uh, of course, no bullet molds uh, where you can get the, the bullet molds if they do another run of them again uh, or if they have any in stock presently. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.